Great, welcome back. Next up, we're gonna be taking a look at modifying and customizing our gel broken iPhone. Now, one of the first programs that you wanna download onto your Mac, or of course, an alternative for a Windows machine, is a VNC connection program. This is uh, called Jolly Fast VNC. It is free for now. And uh, all we have to do is specify our target IP address, that being the iPhone IP address and the default port unless you've changed that. Once I've done so, I can choose to connect. And on my iPhone, it's gonna come up with the pop-up that says, do you want to allow this remote connection? I'm gonna select yes. So basically, if I take you through the initial two steps that you would have gone through, would be to first of all, set up your iPhone and connect to a wireless network. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that, folks. That should be pretty straightforward. But once you've actually done that, you then want to go to the Cydia application icon. And when you run the Cydia application icon, it's going to come up with updating the sources and the packages. This is just one of the application package managers that we can use once your phone's been jailbroken. Now one's going to remember, for all intended purposes, I'm going to take you through different pre-set up configuration parameters for different purposes and so the first set of examples I'm going to take you through would be to set up your iPhone for the main purpose of collecting a forensics uh, acquired image or otherwise just practicing some of your forensics skills for an iPhone so once this is finished reloading all of that data I'm going to just take you through the two applications that I installed one is the VNC or the otherwise known as the VNC remote desktop and two is the SSH server so I can connect to my iPhone using an SSH session. So there it's still reloading the data. Right so once that's finished we can go along and if you look at the front screen there is actually a link there under the user guide section and uh, we can click on the open SSH access how to and that's going to take you through an explanation of what you need to do to enable open SSH. So pretty straightforward, no real rocket science. And then it's giving you all the commands that you would need in order to access your device. So you do want to look at uh, changing the default password, even though it still prompts you, you do want to change the default password. And the reason for that is there's a lot of systems that have been hacked, meaning the iPhones predominantly because they have actually used the default password. So what we've got to do is go through the step-by-step -step instructions here. First of all, you would run your mobile terminal. If you haven't installed it, you can click on that link. And as you can see, my mobile terminal has not been installed, so I'll click on that link to install it. And this is installing it from Cydia once again in case you weren't 100% certain and it will confirm that download and as you can see this is a real straightforward process it is almost like the Apple Mac App Store um, but obviously this gives you the ability to use third-party and non-signed applications bear in mind that in certain parts of the world it, this may not be allowed so want to make sure there's that uh, disclosure in there and disclaimer once it's finished actually loading you will see that Cydia reloads the data because it's almost like your add and remove programs you have with Windows whilst with the uh, iPhone of course it's using a, a predominantly Unix based environment so uh, we'll give that a second yeah there we go and we can then choose to return to Cydia and as you can see we can then choose to modify that as well or we can re remove that application but it's pretty um, self-explanatory, no real rocket science there. We click on back. Next thing you want to do is actually run the mobile terminal and then to actually obtain admin access, you would run the SU root. So the default password for the Apple iPhone is Alpine, as you can see there on the screen. 
and um, we also run the CD only to shorten otherwise very long prompt so as you can see yeah we don't want to have the whole long prompt out there to change the root password it's real simple you just use the passwd and then type in new password twice once that's taken place um, you then change the mobile password and uh, as you can see you then say use the same um, passwd except you use the mobile at the end and so once again this is a very very important step otherwise if we don't run this properly okay so let's look at exactly how we go about doing this on the iPhone so remember it is imperative that you reset your password if not you are going to have a problem so just a quick recap you want to open up the uh, mobile terminal and then you're going to run the SU root which means super user root and then we're going to display or use the default password so if I close that down I should have the new little icon there called terminal and once I get the actual prompt I'll then run the SU for super user and we'll specify root return the password is alpine a l p i n e which i may have got wrong so we'll run that again and specify the password and once we've done that we want to use the pass wd so pass wd and we want to specify a new password remember it is case sensitive and there we have the new password and we now want to use the additional password for the mobile so we'll use the pass wd this time you use mobile hit enter and we can change a new password here as well so that's been done i did want i did want to also point out that the beautiful part about iphones one of the things that i think is you know obviously the sensitive screen so you can flip it and you're going to be able to use it yeah, obviously both horizontally and um, vertically so I've now changed those passwords you can use the CD key to uh, shorten up your actual uh, prompt so you don't have to have the VAR mobile and then you can just use the clear command if you wanted to continue to work in the terminal if you hold your actual screen you can see you have all the other options there that you can use for better use of the terminal interpreter so pretty straightforward uh, so far. This is obviously going to give us the ability to harden security, which is very, very important. Now, the next thing we want to do is go back to Cydia. And this time we want to install a few more applications if for us to be able to perform our initial forensics acquisition, which we'll be taking you through in a few moments. So first of all, wanted to make sure we update in the uh, Cydia data again. All right, so just a quick refresher again on the main Cydia home screen. This is where I went to and uh, looked at some of the user guides there, folks. But um, if we now move over to the bottom tab there, we could go to the different sections for applications where we can install the apps under, obviously, the different uh, areas, so carrier bundles, uh, data storage, etc., etc. We can click on the changes if we wanted to change anything or get updates on any changes that have taken place. And then under the manage, we can look at managing the packages, the sources, and storage. So uh, how much room we still have left for our packages. And then search, of course, we can go and search. Now the next little application I want to install is one that's a very old Swiss Army Knife tool. It's called Netcat. And uh, it's going to become, uh, or it is imperative for us to use Netcat for a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing via the network. And as you can see, it is a simple socket manipulation tool. It was not uh, really designed to be used for hacking purposes, but as it's evolved, it has become that Swiss Army Knife tool. So as you can see, I'm going to go along and just do a quick install of Netcat. No real rocket science. When it comes up, you want to confirm the install. You can see it's only a 20K install, so very, very, very small little application. And uh, once we've completed this, we are going to then just try and log on and verify and validate that we can log on through an SSH session. So whilst uh, we're waiting for the reload of data there, 
we can then go along and open up our shell or terminal application. So of course, it depends on whether you're using an Apple Mac or a Windows machine. Process is pretty much the same, except that we will get into using a different version of the shell or command pro. So just remember, we're looking at creating a remote connection to the actual iPhone that's running SSH server. And uh, just a refresher, if you're not 100% certain what to do, go along to Cydia and go down to the user guides and look at opening SSH, how to access it. It's going to give it to you straight up. And remember, we did change our default password. So going into a terminal session, there's the command. I'm going to hit enter. And within a few seconds, it should come up with the generation of the crypto keys. And mine took a little bit longer, folks. Remember, we are using a wireless network. Wireless networking, depending on which standard you're using to connect to. If it's the good old uh, A, B, or G, you are only connecting with half duplex. So it will take a lot longer. Here's the crypto keys. I'm going to say yes, I want to continue. And uh, specify your password. Remember, I'm using the password that I've used to change it. The default is otherwise Alpine. And I am now actually logged on to the iPhone using an SSH session remotely. So this, again, demonstrates we can now do a whole lot more from the actual iPhone now. And uh, if we just go along and type in LS as an example, that's going to give us a list of the actual files that we actually have. And uh, we're then going to go through a lot more simulated examples. So you can see just how much more uh, uh, direct access we have to these devices once it's been jailbreaked. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. We'll be back with a whole lot more in the coming sessions. We'll be looking at forensics purposes of the iPhone, extracting information, extracting evidence. We'll be looking at setting up our iPhone with all the hacking and cracking tools. So uh, hold on to your seats and we'll be back soon.